Welcome to Miss Trini Treats. I'm Missy and today I am showing you how I made this magical mermaid castle with little Ariel sitting at the top. Today's video is a collaboration with Victoria from the channel Victoria Vale. I love her personality. She's so bubbly and energetic and she creates such fun videos that range from crafts to test videos, foods, and so much more. So head on over to her channel and show her some love. I will leave all of her links down in the description box below. For today's collaboration, we have joined forces to bring you some mermaid themed cakes. Victoria created this two-tiered cake showcasing the mermaid scales and the seashell top. I will also leave a link to her video once again down in the description box below. So let's get started on our mermaid castle cake. To begin, I first crumb coated both my cakes. Check out my tutorial on how to crumb coat a cake in the description box below. To apply the scales to the cake, squeeze out a little dot of frosting and then use the back of a spoon to slide the frosting upward. Just try to start the spoon about half an inch from the edge of the dot and then pull the spoon upward. Do this all the way around the bottom of the cake. For the second row, start in between two of your dots and drop a dot directly onto the line where the first two dots meet and then follow all of the same steps as before. For the third row, I did the same thing, but this time I used some light blue buttercream frosting. For the fourth row, I wanted to add some hints of purple, so I dropped two light purple dots and then one dark purple dot in random areas of the row and then spread them upward with my spoon and then filled in the areas along the same row with my light blue buttercream. Once I got to the top, I added my dots right along the edge and then whooped my spoon upward quickly all the way around. To start the first row at the top, I dropped my dots along the edge in between each of the previous scales below. Because the circle of the cake gets smaller as you add each line, you don't need to try to drop each of the dots perfectly between each of the previous scales. Just try to keep them a consistent size all the way around. I only did two rolls at the top because my second tier is going to be sitting on it so you won't see any of the other scales. I placed a little frosting in the center of my rectangular cake board and centered my cake on it. I then used three straws for support by pushing them into the cake near the center, wiggled them around a little, pulled them back up, and then cut at the frosting line. For my second tier, I just piped on my buttercream and then used my bench scraper to smooth it out. Because my cake plate was a little larger than the base of my cake, I cut off the excess with my food safe scissors for a more cohesive look. Hey, Bentley! I then hovered it over the top of my first tier and dropped it as close to the center of the cake as possible, which as you can see here, I totally missed. But that's okay, because it means that I get to show you how I fixed it. I used my offset spatula to slide it under the cake plate and lifted it up and over. To keep the two cakes together, I am using my old trusty bamboo sticks. If bamboo sticks aren't your thing, you can use dowel rods instead. Just push them all the way down through both cakes and fill in the hole at the top with frosting. Using my Wilton's Castle Kit, I removed one of each of the different sized turrets and pressed them about one inch down into the cake to create a hole to where I wanted them to go. I then filled each of the holes with melted candy melts. I was pretty surprised at how well this held. I then added each of my other turrets to the large cake board to sort of dry fit them and then adhered each one with a little bit of candy melts on the bottom of each turret. For the 
roof of each turret, I added the same dots as I did with the first tier, but this time I sort of dragged the bag upward a little instead of using a spoon. So you're probably thinking, Missy, why didn't you just do that with a cake as well? Well, for the cake, I thought the spoon technique would give it more of a scaly look with the indent from the spoon. But at this point, it was just harder for me to hold the roof and apply the frosting using the spoon technique. And not to mention, this went a whole lot faster. So yeah, you could probably do it either way and it'll still look about the same. Okay, so now drop the roof into the turret and once done, begin adding your splash ups or splashes of water around the base of each turret. I did this by dropping little globs of blue buttercream around the base of each turret and then use the back end of my spatula to swoop them up a bit. I decided to add a touch of white buttercream to the back of my spatula to add a more oceany, foamy look to them and then finish them off with some white sugar pearls for bubbles. Using my white buttercream fitted with tip number 12, I dropped white dots along the seam of where the two cakes met and on top of each turret roof. Save this bag of frosting as you're going to need it in a little bit. I made this template with a bunch of different mermaid silhouettes, a seahorse, and two little silhouettes of Ariel on it. I will leave a link in the description box for this template if you would like to use it as well. After cutting them out, I laid all of the mermaid templates onto pink fondant and cut around them with my cutting tool. I removed the template and placed the mermaid aside to harden. For my seashells, starfish, and sand dollars, I used this fondant mold by pushing in some white fondant into each mold, rolled over it with my fondant roller, and then removed the outer excess with my fingers. I smoothed out the edges by pulling the sides inward with the tip of my finger and then peeled it out of my mold. This part is optional, but I wanted to add a light pink shimmer to the top of each shell, so I used my ColourPop Pink Edible Dust and then just lightly brushed it on. This stuff is super concentrated, so a little bit goes a long way. To make the purple seaweed, I snaked out some purple fondant and then used my fondant roller to flatten it out. I trimmed the edges at an angle and then began twisting it all the way from one end to the other. Okay guys, so I'm super excited to share this cool trick I found online for hardening fondant faster. Place your fondant pieces onto a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper and then turn on your oven to the hold warm setting. Let it sit for five minutes and then turn your oven off. Place your cookie sheet into the oven and let it sit for 10 minutes. Once your 10 minutes are up, Take them out of the oven and let them sit in the pan for 30 additional minutes. And that's it. So while I was waiting 30 minutes for these, I began working on the castle door. I cut a purple piece of fondant to about two and a half inches long and two inches wide, and then used my two and a quarter inch round cookie cutter to round out the top portion of the door. I placed it up against the front of the castle with some water and then used my white buttercream fitted with tip number 12 again to drop little white dots around the base of the bottom tier. Now here comes the fun part. It is time to add all of your fondant pieces. I applied some mermaids and some seaweed to the two tiers, added my two seahorses to the back turrets, some seaweed on the top tier, scattered some shells around the top, added some seaweed on each side of each turret, dropped in a star and some shells at the base of each one, and then finished it off with some sand dollars as stepping stones. I also placed some sugar pearls all over to add to the appearance of bubbles. And let's not forget, Ariel right at the top. And that's it. All right, you guys, so here is our mermaid castle cake that we made today. 
I just love how this turned out and I love that we were able to put Ariel right at the top as she's thinking about her life above the water on the land with her prince. This was such a fun collab and it's right up my alley. And don't forget to check out my friend Victoria's channel as she has created this beautiful mermaid cake. She's so fun and you're just gonna love her. If you like this tutorial, please give me a big old thumbs up. If you make this treat, please hashtag me as I love to see your awesome baking creations. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I make a new trendy treat every week. Until next time, bye bye guys.